In sports, fans love to judge players by rings, which is a team achievement, but in football, all of that goes out the window. Eli Manning is a perfect example. Now, I'm not making a video to bash Eli, but to point out the inconsistencies of the argument. Eli is a mediocre, simple as that. You never know what you're going to get with him. Yes, he has two rings, but does that make him better than anybody he has more than? There's no doubt in my mind he'll make Hall of Fame going off of two rings instead of numbers, which is nothing wrong with it, but most Hall of Famers have made it off of numbers. Some people try to glorify Eli like he has accomplished the impossible. Always bring up the fact he beat Brady twice in the Super Bowl. Yes, that's impressive, but that's not what makes a Hall of Fame quarterback. Eli is the worst out of the 04 draft class between Big Ben and Rivers. Eli has more than 70 turnovers compared to them in only six 4,000 yard seasons. And the debate for best quarterback from the 04 draft class is between Rivers and Big Ben. Eli is just living off of two Super Bowls. Now that is not a bad thing, but the argument is just toxic. Eli is top 10 in every category that needs to be checked out to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Okay, cool. But what most people don't understand is a Super Bowl doesn't validate a player of Hall of Fame quality. We've seen plenty of players without a Super Bowl go into the Hall of Fame first ballot. A Super Bowl is nice to have, but to act like it goes further than talent itself is ridiculous. Players like Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees have only won a single Super Bowl. Are they not as good as Eli, if not better? And the little troll argument that was talked about for years until Super Bowl 50 was Eli was better than Payne because Eli had more rings. But if it wasn't for Von Miller who gift wrapped a ring for Payne, we would still be hearing that nonsense. That's like saying Joe Flacco is just as good as Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees just because the amount of rings they have. No one damn well anybody who knows football doesn't even compare Flacco to either of them. Since the merger of 1970, only six other quarterbacks have made at least 7,000 passing attempts in their career. That goes to show for Eli's longevity. And if he never throws another pass in the NFL again, Eli will finish with the sixth most passes completed, seventh all time in passing yards, seventh all time with the most touchdown passes, and the 39th highest passer rating in league history, which is good but not great. The number puts Eli at 40th all time and 23rd amongst active players. He sits with a group of quarterbacks that aren't too appealing with Carson Palmer, Jay Culler, and Sam Bradford. Eli has 34th quarter comebacks that puts him 7th all time where he's tied with Brett Favre from Fred Tarkington and it also puts him at an astounding 2nd among active quarterbacks behind only Tom Brady. Eli is one of only 5 other players to ever win 2 or more Super Bowl MVP awards. But is that enough to overcome his largely inconsistent regular season performances? It has been a marvelous career for Eli, but it's just not one to say he's better than another quarterback of his caliber. Eli's legacy will likely have a spot for him in the Hall of Fame, where it seemingly got secured back in 2012, where he capped off the 2011 season with a second Super Bowl victory over Tom Brady and the Patriots. What it comes down to is the age-old question, stats or rings? There are players who have both Tom Brady, John Montana, and so forth. And there are also players who just have regular season stats but no rings such as Jim Kelly and Dan Marino. The point is you can undoubtedly tell who's better without bringing up rings. Nobody thinks Dan Marino isn't good just because he didn't win a Super Bowl and Eli isn't a GOAT. But it is true, you can't spill elite without Eli. Max, is Eli a Hall of Famer? Yep. Not quite yet but he still has a chance. Eli, if he makes the Hall of Fame, it will be based on the fact, look, I could rattle off the accomplishments, and you just did some of them. Eighth in uh, uh, yards and seventh in uh, total offense, seventh in touchdown passes, all time quarterback list. Second longest Ironman streak, right? Behind Favre, he had 210 starts consecutively. And in the NFL at that position, that means a lot, even though, admittedly, out of 32 starting quarterbacks in most of those years, he was you know, usually or oftentimes not top 10, but almost always top 15. So if you say we average a little above average in a given year with longevity and consistency, how is that a, a, a Hall of Famer? Well, it wouldn't be, except he's also hit significant heights. He's a four-time pro bowler. Little skimpy for a Hall of Fame quarterback. That is true, but that ain't nothing. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. And not only that, a two-time Super Bowl MVP. And not only that, analysis, the most cutting-edge analysis of who's the most clutch quarterback in the history of the NFL in the postseason is Eli Manning. So this 538 will say he's been decidedly mediocre throughout a lot of his career.